Hey guys, it's Chris Prefontaine. I'm here with John Hannigan because I wanted him to go over a couple details on the deal he's working on right now uh, in his neck of the woods, which is Pennsylvania. Uh, correct? Actually? Yes. Yeah. yeah that's what I mean. <laughs> um, Sean's a coaching client. Uh, started in May-ish. Got his first deal in June-ish. And I wanted him to talk about this cash out that he's working on now because the buyers are, are hot and heavy. So, Sean, just um, price rent, uh, price of the house that you were on for um, in the structure with this buyer. And I think it was the second app, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Second, second applicant? Uh, yes. Yeah. Second applicant. And she put on the um, app. Uh, actually, just recap the conversation because you did a good job with it. Okay. So the house was a for sale by owner. My virtual assistant, and um, it came in. It was in an area that I was familiar with, uh, in the suburbs of Philadelphia. The asking price uh, was set at one fifty-five. Um, I called, spoke very briefly about what we do with the lease purchase, and I offered to email her a, a copy of the explanation letter we sent. And once I sent that to her, I asked Chris to do a follow-up call to answer any questions that she had. Chris did a follow-up call and recorded it, and um, basically kind of telling in her voice that she was all for it. She was um, trying to cover a $650 a month mortgage, and it was just kind of stretching her, and she wanted to move in with a family member and get out from under the house. So I made an appointment to go out and look at the house, uh, looked at it, it was in great condition, and I told her, you know, we could do that, we could get her out of the mortgage. And she signed the, uh, the contract at that time, the agreement. Um, the terms were for 48 months for a lease, and it was going to be for a price of 145000 instead of 155000 And, Sean, let me jump in. I just made a couple yeah. notes. So you sent the lease explanation document, and the only reason I wanted to jump in is I just revised that today. So for those of you watching that are coaching clients, uh, you can go to the members area, and Ryan, I think, already has it up, our web guy. So... It, I tweaked it because, so for you to know too, Sean, I tweaked it to just edit some things, but I also wanted to make it kind of open-ended for owner financing people where it was kind of slanted heavily to lease purchase. And we love the owner financing with principal only, so I kind of tweaked it just enough so that they knew if they were debt-free, there's an option there to get a nice arrangement. That's all. Um, all right, so now let's do this. Let's fast forward. Um, I think you got two apps, two applicants, and that's a, so talk about the... Um, not the first one that had no money, but talk about this one that we did, that you end up going to do meet with if we accept it. Okay, so I made a phone call to her for the, um, the follow-up. She actually left her next step for work blank. Oh, that's right. She filled out the first two lines. I think her, her name and her, um, her email address was all she gave me. So I kind of called to, to get some more information on that, and I, I just went through it line by line. Filled it out. There was a little misunderstanding with the seller when she was showing the house. And the seller was holding on to it, was having her have them fill the form out there. You know, oh. the so I think the person was in a hurry and she just let her fill out the first two lines. So I just went line by line as if I was interviewing her and I asked her how much money she would have to put down on the house. And, her, and she immediately answered with uh, about 3000 and. I told her that we require three to ten percent, and on that house, the low end would be about five thousand dollars. And asked her if that would be a problem, and she said no. She could, she could get five thousand. That would be a problem. Um, so then I, I kind of talked to her some more about uh, the fact that other people were interested in the house, we might get more applications in, and, and if she's only at three percent, it may not, you know too well to get her into the house. Perfect. But I moved on to the next question, which was um, asking her if she was going to have any other income coming in, in the future that she could put towards the house. And I, I suggested a, a tax return. And I said, I gave her an example. I said, so I asked her if she normally gets these tax returns. She said $10,000. So I said, you know, for example, if you wanted to, you know, I said, I don't want to stretch you and take your entire tax return. But if you could say give six or seven thousand of that towards the down payment, then you know that would that would help as well. And she said, Oh, I could do that, I could do seven thousand. So she offered seven thousand on that and I, I put that down. When I got to the question about the monthly rent that she'd be comfortable with, 
I left that open ended. She said a thousand dollars is what she could she could do. And I reminded her that the house was listed was a fourteen hundred dollar per month rent. And I told her that, you know, we can work with them and that's a pretty decent spread there that, you know, I didn't know if my partners would go for it. Perfect. Let me let me say something about that. Two things. Um, one, you guys heard what John said. His payment's six fifty, so he knows in his head he's got a nice buffer. And number two, he used the third party, didn't he? I mean, he can use me as his coach, but uh, forever, even if I wasn't here, he could say that I have to check with my partners, right? I say it all the time. So then he's he's safe. He gets to think about it and he gets to come back. So there's a lot of reasons to use that third party thing, aside from the fact that I, I would help, but even without me, anyone can say that. So that's good. So. So she, when I, when I said that, you know, I told her that there was that difference. I said, maybe you're saying a thousand could be eleven hundred, and she said, yeah, I can probably do eleven hundred. So I, I put her down for eleven hundred, and then I, I told her that it's still, you know, fairly large spread there difference. So I said, you get that same tax return every year. So I, and she said, oh yeah, it's every year. And I said, would that be something you'd be willing to do is put aside that tax return towards the down payment? Said, if that's the case, that would help us you know, compensate for the difference in the rent. And she said, Oh, yeah, I can do that. I can put the 7000 every year down for the down payment. Um, and I said, Well, if that's the case, I, you know, I think we could probably work that out with, the monthly, with our monthly rent. And so she committed to do it 7 out of 10000 per year for the, for the term. Bingo. Uh, so let me just recap it for these guys listening because I think. This is going to be on the, the regular site, not the, the membership. So it is not a person, Sean, that wouldn't like uh, to recap, guys, 550 a month for three years probably. That's what we we'll write it up for, but could be a little less, could be a little more. Uh, but that's not bad, Six, $6,300 a year, $6,600 a year. Um, not too shabby on the spread. And uh, twenty six grand over three years, 6100 of it up front. I want to explain that. Uh, and then there might be a little bit on the back end still because of the uh, pay down on the mortgage. So I think we calculate another maybe seven or ten, something like that, maybe. So let me just mention one thing, Sean, for strategy for these guys. Um, so what Sean's going to do is Sean negotiated with the woman, like we always do, to pay her 30 days, start her mortgage payments 30 days after occupancy. That means the first month that the buyer is going to come to the closing table with for 1100 is pure cash. So Sean has five grand plus eleven hundred. So he really has sixty one hundred down is what he has in his pocket to start the deal. And the very next month he starts profiting five fifty a month. So nice deal. That's all I want to capture that, Sean. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else you want to share with these guys, but um, that's all I just want to capture it and let these guys know that for, for goodness sakes if they if you do one of these a month, which you can now and you will now. You probably want to do two, but you'll do one a month. Uh, that's a good cash flow you get set up. Right and everything Everything you said was actually, um, you know, everything you said, that, not to say I doubt it, but I, I couldn't imagine it, I couldn't picture it, as you were saying. That's but, normal. Um, you know, talking to all the people, you know, and, and talking to the different leads that, I, that came in, you know, you, you said that you'll know, you know, there's people that are interested in it, there's people that are, need to be educated about it, but you'll know when they're ready for it, and, you know, this person from, just was ready for it, and it just made sense to her. Um, aside from that, you know, as far as the sale price on the house, um, I don't think even through my interview with the buyer, I don't know. It was a while before she ever even asked. Me they don't, the house, right? <laughs> especially the lower end because they tickle pink. You're helping them. Yeah. So you probably could have been ten grand higher, to be honest with you, but that's okay. I didn't want to get greedy in the first deal with you. <laughs> All right. Well, Sean, I appreciate it. Um, Spending some time because I just I think it's going to help a lot of people. But and um, let me I'm going to stop the recording here for everyone and um, and stay on with you. Hold on one sec.